We're just going to select the hair and just release. <laughs> this removal tool is just absolute magic for macro retouching. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into the magical world of Photoshop, focusing on a game changer for all you macro photographer lovers out there, the Remove tool. Photoshop offers a plethora of tools for image retouching, but one of the most powerful and often used for macro photography is the Remove tool. The Remove tool was released in Photoshop's May 2023 update as the generative AI filled most of the headlines, this neat little tool kind of slipped under the radar for most users. It's nestled within the Healing Brush Tool Palette and it's your go-to for cleaning up those little yet distracting elements that often plague close-up shots. Macro photography reveals the beauty in the details but it also unveils imperfections not seen by the naked eye. Dust spots, tiny scratches, Let's make them all disappear. I'm in Photoshop now and it's February 2024 and I have the latest version installed. Do check your version of Photoshop and update it if necessary. First things first, always work on a duplicate layer. This way your original image stays untouched, preserving your ability to compare the before and after or backtrack if needed. First of all, all we want to do is select a new layer and I'm going to rename this to Fixes. So I have an image of Bungie here in front of me and for a jumpish body is relatively quite clean. But with our safety net, which is our layer that's called fixes in place, let's zoom in on our subject. You can see all these little bits of dust and hair that is all over Bungie. We're going to make all of that disappear using the remove tool. The remove tool is over here on the healing panel and it's underneath the spot healing brush tool. If you don't see it, click and hold the panel and then you can select the remove tool and this tool it's one of the easiest tools to use even for beginning because all we got to do is just click on the stuff we want to be removed and photoshop's going to do its magic for you so simply just clicking on the dust spots i want removed and they are gone same goes for the fly. If we look at the fly, we have a lot of debris on the fly. You can't really blame him for his unhygienic look because he's been eaten at the time. But we can just remove these distracting elements very easily with the remove tool. Not impressed yet, are you? But hang on, I'm going to impress you some more. And while we're looking at something just a little bit harder, take a look at this Huntsman, for instance. What I want to do is take a look at the tool palette up the top here. So we have the brush size. We could turn on pressure sensitivity. So if you're using a tablet, we can use the pressure sensitivity. So we have the color of the brush stroke as you apply it, which is like the masking and the opacity. A sample all layers, that's something I'll turn on and off depending on the situation. If I'm working on a massive stack, I'll have it all turned on. And then we've got remove after each stroke. So after I click once the remove tool goes to action and does its thing. If I don't want that to happen, then we could turn this off. Let me show you that now. I'm going to turn that off. And under here, I am going to put on a new layer and I'm going to go into the mouth part. And you can see the issue we have here, very mucky eater. And what we can do now is, let me turn this back on kind of so I can show you. What happens when we have the remove after each stroke selected is after we click once on everything, it's going to do its magic. And when you have several layers that are built up, you can see it can slow down. So to overcome that, what we can do is to turn off remove after each stroke. And what we can do now, we can select the areas we want to have removed. And after each stroke, Photoshop will not process the image. It merely adds on this, what I would call a selection. And you can see the highlighted selection with this um, color that is at 25%. And again, you can change the color up here. So if I wanna change that to red, I can do. If I wanna change it to yellow, I can do that as well. Generally, I'll just leave it on the default value. Once we've selected everything we want to have removed, all we gotta do is press the Enter key. And then Photoshop will do its magic and it will remove all of those bits for you. Magic. You can see there, the before and after, how much more cleaned up it is and you're presenting your subject in a much more pleasing way than it would have been out of camera. So I'm just going to zoom out now. I'm just going to show you the rest of the edits that I've done on this particular one. We got removed all the debris, particularly this, um, I don't know, looks like a rock in macro terms, but it's probably just a little grain of uh, dirt or sand. 
and we've removed all of that. And it does take some time to do, but once you've done that, you can get an edit that looks like this. Much more presentable for your portfolio. But what's important is I only remove the dust and debris. If it comes to damaged parts on a subject, I'm a little bit more hesitant because that's how the subject is. So we have a single shot here of a house spider. Not the best shot, but it is a good demonstration of what the healing brush can do. You see here on the spider, we have what looks like, it's like wire. <laughs> Wire in macro terms is probably just a bit of fluff. And what I want to do is I want to show you the old way of doing it. The difference between the remove tool and the content aware fill tool is simple. Content aware fill examines the whole image and selects pixels from different areas to heal the area. Whereas the remove tool is actually using AI. The remove tool is generating pixels to fix it. It is very powerful. This is the old way that I would do it. I would take a lasso tool and I would select the area that I want to heal. There we go. Then I would come up to edit, content aware fill. And then we can just click OK. And there you go. And it's not a bad result, but you can see how we've got this line here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. You can see we've got some lines there that need to be cleaned up this part needs to be cleaned up as well that needs to be cleaned up you can see that's repeating texture that i talked about in the last video well, i'm going to undo that now so again we're going to select the remove tool i'm going to make the brush just bigger than the area i need to be removed i'm going to brush over it release press enter and there gone much cleaner result and it's a lot quicker to get it done as well we're not having to select it and then go into the content aware fill then having to clone in afterwards it's all done in one stroke let's go to a more extreme example here you see on this spider which is another hair spider we have two pieces of hair that we need to remove and i'm sure you're all in agreement that the image is better without those hairs now what i want to do is show you something when we have the remove after each stroke selected you can actually have your brush a little bit smaller and paint around what you want to be removed and when you let go, Photoshop will fill in the selection for you. If you watch now, there, and it's gone. Boom. Magic. <laughs> it's magic. Let's take a look at this hair. Let me zoom out so you can see this hair. Well, I don't think, in this, think it's a hair. It's some sort of debris. Once again, we're going to use the old method to remove this and see what it looks like. So I would come in here. I would select what I want to be removed. We would then come to Content Aware Fill. And we'll click OK. And again, it does an OK job. You can see areas such as here and here. And I'll be completely honest with you, on inspection, you probably wouldn't even notice it. But it's down to you to retouch to the level that you want. So for me, that's not really a choice that I want to use. But let's test the remove tool. So I've undone all that. We're going to come to the remove tool and again i'm going to select a size that's just larger than the debris i want to remove we're going to come in and paint it out like that now admittedly we do have a couple of repeated textures but all we got to do is click once click twice and it's gone it's just brilliant it's absolutely fantastic it's very very powerful so i'm back with bungee now and i want to show you something that i've been using this remove tool for lately and i'm hoping i can find something here hairs fixing up hairs on spiders with the remove tool is absolutely fantastic it really works very well let me put my new layer on it's called fixes and we're going to come over to the remove tool and again make the remove tool just slightly larger than the hair you want to be removed and we can remove those hairs very nice Now, it doesn't always work. You are going to have to finesse this tool. You can see there we've got a slight colorization that's going on there. You can go over areas multiple times to clean them up. I've got this hair here that's bent out of proportion. Let's get rid of that. And now what I want to show you is something that I found that's quite nice. You see here, this hair is all like wonky. Now, we have the option to remove the hair. No problem with that. But sometimes I will use the remove tool to add or repair the hair so what we're going to do is click on where the hair is good move down over the bad parts and then release 
and you can see there we can actually regrow hairs using the remove tool it is very very powerful between the remove tool and the clone tool i have all the tools i need to retouch my macro shots one last demo i want to show you is this moth image here i'm going to zoom all the way in and quite often what happens with macro photography is you get this blurring effect around detailed areas very regularly within focus stacks in macro photography where you've got high detail against each other with a different depth of field now what i'm about to show you doesn't work 100 percent of the time i'd say probably 25 percent of the time but when it does work it's absolutely fantastic let's grab the remove tool and i'm going to make my brush size just slightly bigger than the blurring on the uh, image there what i'm going to do is I'm going to brush across the blur just touching the moth where we want the detail to remain we're just slightly touching it i'm going to release and boom i don't need to say much more than that that is absolutely fantastic and there you have it a pristine distraction free macro shot that highlights the true beauty of your subject the remove tool in photoshop is a powerful ally in your post-processing workflow allowing you to achieve that flawless finish i hope this tutorial inspires you to dive into your macro shots and bring out their best with a little photoshop magic remember the key to great photography is not just capturing the world as we see it, but as we imagine it could be. The Remove tool has transformed my post-processing retouching of my macro shots. It's more powerful, it's more precise, and it's faster. Do please go into Photoshop and give the Remove tool a try. I'm sure you will learn to love it. But that's where I'm going to leave this video. My name's Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video, and I'll see you on the next. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe and click the like button. It really does help out the channel. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support in supporting me and this channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon, then check in the description below this video for a link to Patreon. If you want to continue watching my macro journey, then click one of the videos in front of you now.